The Brave web browser is absolutely no stranger to controversy, so much so that you'd even call it a marketing strategy, but that's kind of a topic for a different video. What we're going to be talking about today is the really, really sketchy behavior they've been doing recently with basically taking links to, say, Binance and to the Trezor shop and to the Ledger shop, and then sticking their referral code on the end. Now, there's an article that I've got right here that basically describes this as URL hijacking. I would say it's a little bit different to that, and it's very important to make that distinction. So, if we're talking about a URL hijack, that would be something like you install a really sketchy plugin, and you try to go to google.com, and then it will take you to Google, but spelt with zeros or something like that. That, without a doubt, is URL hijacking. What Brave is doing is absolutely sketchy, and they really shouldn't be doing it, especially without asking their users. If they ask their users and they say yes, I don't care what you do at that point, but it should not be the default behavior. The reason this is slightly different is because you can still get to the regular Binance website, you can still get to the regular Trezor shop and the Ledger shop, but what it will do is when you try to type those in, it'll automatically try to stick the referral code on the end, but you can still do the search without the referral code. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a bit, but I just need to get it out of the way that I'm not defending this. I think it is terrible behavior, but calling it link hijacking is a little bit extreme. So we're not really going to read through this article right here. If you want to go read it yourself, I'll leave a link to it down below. But what I wanted to mention basically is who started this. So this was found by a user on Twitter by the name of Cryptonator1337. So we're going to go directly over to that post right here. And this is what's basically happening. So when you are using the Brave browser and you type in Binance.us, you end up being redirected to Binance.us with the referral code here. Now, as I said before, if we try to do that now, so let's type in Binance. I'm not using the updated version of Brave, so it still has this problem. As you can see, we start trying to type it in and it auto fills in the referral code. Let's keep typing it in, see if we can change what's going to happen. Now, as you can see, we still can click on the Binance link right here. So we still can get to the website. The same thing is going to happen if you try to type in things like BTC. As you can see, we can still do the DuckDuckGo search for BTC. But down the bottom here, it's got the two Binance links. Or we try to type in Bitcoin, the same thing happens as well. So down the bottom here, we have the Binance link. We try to do something like search for LTC. Once again, another Binance link, or we type in Litecoin, and the same thing is going to happen, another Binance link. And like with the others, you can still do the search for the regular token, but it is going to try to encourage you to use their link, which should not be enabled by default. If you want to have it there, have it disabled by default, and people can opt into it. If people could opt into it, this wouldn't be a story. Now, the other thing that has made this a story was basically the response from the CEO. So over here, this guy right here, Brendan Eich. Brendan Eich is the co-founder and CEO of Brave. Now, the reason why this is a story, I don't think it would have really become much of a story if it was just like, oh, you have these referral codes in Brave. The reason why this is a story is because of the response the CEO gave. So basically the response to the original post was, yes, we partner with Binance as an affiliate, that code identifies us, not you. But it gets much worse from here. Now, we have this response here. Someone asked the CEO, so you find this ethical? Now, the correct answer to this question was, no, this was a massive mistake. We shouldn't have done this without asking our users. However, Mr. Brendan Icke has decided that, no, that's not the response he's going to give. Instead, this is his response. Yes, please say why you don't. It is similar to when you search in Firefox, Opera, or Safari and a client ID query parameter is added. No, it is absolutely not the same as that. What are you talking about? If we're specifically talking about editing a URL, yes, other web browsers will edit the URL. They'll add things like a client ID string to it. That's perfectly reasonable. That just identifies what the web browser is. However, they are not making money off of doing that. That is where the problem happens here. If you want to ask your users, hey, do you want to opt into this program where if you go to Binance, basically we'll make a bit of money off of that and then obviously that can go back into the network. I don't know if it is going back into the network, but let's just presume that it is. If that's what was happening, no problem. But if you're just saying, well, you're trying to go to Binance and you just want to use Binance regularly, you don't want to support anyone from it, you just want to support Binance and you just want to buy the coins there. 
you do not get the opportunity to just stick your referral link on that just because you're a web browser. Brave is already in this sort of weird ethical position where you can already make the argument that you really shouldn't be using it. So if you don't know, what Brave does is it basically takes the normal ad model you see and then flips it upside down. So what it does is it will basically block all regular ads and all regular trackers, or at least most of them, and then it injects its own ad network. And then basically the user of the web browser gets paid for the ads they're served. And then they have complete control over whether they actually want to pay the creators or whether they want to keep that revenue for themselves. Now you can make the argument of whether that's a good thing or not. Personally, I think everyone should be running an ad blocker anyway. So you can probably guess what my stance on it is. And the only way that a model like this can actually survive is if the users of your web browser actually trust it. And doing stuff like this where you're trying to auto-complete your own referral links, that's a great way to lose your users' trust. And it seems like a lot of people in this thread are basically saying, well, I'm not going to use Brave anymore. Now, I don't know how many of those people were actually using Brave, and I don't know what sort of hit this would have on the Brave market share, because... As with all sort of Twitter outrage, you don't really know how many people are actually using the thing that they're angry about or if they're just posting about it because they want to be angry about something. Now, because of all the backlash that has happened, he's pretty much been forced to come out and actually give a proper response to it rather than just replying to tweets. So he's given this big thread here that pretty much explains all of the complaints that people had and pretty much the reasoning behind what they were doing and why they thought it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. So basically his explanation is that the autocomplete default was inspired by search query client ID attribution that all browsers do. But unlike keyword queries, a type in URL should go to the domain named without any additions. Sorry for this mistake, we are clearly not perfect but we correct our course quickly. To me that sounds a lot like PR speak when a company is caught with their hand in the cookie jar, but you know what, at least they have decided Yes, we were in the wrong, even if it was the most PR speak answer I've ever seen. They did say, yes, we're in the wrong, and it is fixed. Now, if you want to see every single thing that was being modified when you would type something in, there is this GitHub issue about it. So we have things like Binance.com, Bitcoin, BTC, Ethereum, ETH, Litecoin, LTC, BNB, which I'm going to assume was for Binance. And it actually gets a bit worse than that. So if you try to go directly to the Coinbase join, it will try to take you to their affiliate. If you try to go to ledger.com and buy a Ledger Nano X, it would take you to their affiliate. And also for the Trezor One Metallic link, if you try to go to that link, it would also take you to their referral. So if we just try this one right here, if we copy that in, put it up in the browser, as you can see, it tries to stick the referral code on there. Now, if you're like me and you're not using the absolute cutting edge version of Brave, this feature will still be enabled by default. So if you want to go and disable it, basically what you're going to do is go into your Brave settings and there'll be one option you need to disable and that is this one right here. So show Brave suggested sites in order complete suggestions. So if we disable that and then we try to take one of these links here, it shouldn't show the referral codes. We might have to do a reboot, but I'm not sure. No, as you can see, now it's not actually trying to add the referral link to the end of it. So that seems to have worked as we would expect. As I said earlier, if this was just disabled by default, literally no one would care because if you enabled the feature and it started adding in referral links, well, you enabled the feature, just turn it off. The fact that it was enabled by default is the serious problem here. And the other serious problem is the fact that the CEO, as soon as people started calling him out for it, tried to defend it. That was the other big thing. You have to have your users trust you, otherwise a project like this isn't going to work. I don't know what it is about open source projects in crypto who always try to do sketchy things and then don't expect people to call them out for it. Library has been the same as well. They've done some sketchy things recently where I'm like, what are you guys doing? And like, what? What? That was, that, that, we didn't do anything wrong. I was like, do I really have to explain to you something this basic? Now you might be asking at this point, are you going to keep using Brave? And for me, I don't think that this was that big of a deal for me personally. I was never actually affected by it. I didn't use Binance. I didn't ever search for things like BTC or LTC. If I wanted to see a price, I would go to CoinMarketCap. If I wanted to go to an exchange, I would go to the exchanges that I already trust. I didn't feel like adding an extra exchange there just for the sake of adding an extra exchange. So personally, I wasn't affected by this and personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal in my life. Now, I can entirely understand why anyone would want to stop using Brave at this point. That entirely makes sense. If you don't trust the browser anymore, 
I can see why. This isn't the first time where they've done things that could completely lose the trust of their users. I did a video a few months back about how coins started to disappear, and it's because they were modifying their network, and basically, they didn't lose any coins, but people couldn't see the coins anymore. Basically, the way you could get around that was just take them out of the uphold wallet and put it in just a different wallet. That's what I've been doing with my bat now, and it just works way better. And this time, I wasn't affected either, so I'm not going to be making any changes to my workflow, but I'm not making any recommendations today. So if you want to keep using Brave, feel free to keep using Brave. If you want to stop using Brave, feel free to stop using Brave. There's going to be links to everything that I looked at down below, so feel free to check those out. And after reading those for yourself, feel free to make up your own mind about it. So I think that's everything for today's video, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Peter Lee, Road, Tony Lono, Hilary, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and anywhere you listen to audio podcasts for the audio version. This channel is also available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute, so feel free to check out my content over there as well. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.